I love you. Entering the red pill risk area. Authorized persons only. Got here too late. Dudley. She really did love me. She said she'd die for me. Oh, my darling. Bonding versus cuckolding. Is it nature or is it nurture? Cuckolding, defined at least in relation to this video, means that a woman will copulate with one man but get another man to support the offspring that are not his. Although it can be argued that certain individuals lean towards one mating strategy or the other, the truth is that neither nature or nurture are the main driving forces that make up a woman's mind. It's all about the opportunities available to her in a certain environment. What I mean is that if the environment is such that pair bonding is conducive to reproduction then, both on a conscious and subconscious level, the female's pair bonding inclination will kick in. If cuckolding is not only available but affordable, if not profitable or beneficial, then this inclination will kick in. At this point, I'm looking forward to a simple and easily reversible form of male contraception which will, at least, give men an equal footing in regards to birth control. But there's just one catch. Inevitably, this will only lead to more cuckolding. And we all know that even a non-biological father can legally get stuck with the responsibility of it including paying support payments or go to jail. This is the way the crooked system has been diabolically and deliberately set up to fuck men over even more. The system has been so deliberately arranged so that even if the couple is merely cohabitating then the man can get stuck with not only sponsoring the child but also being legally forced to make support payments for children that are not his. Look, the other side, freed. What's the matter? Why are we stopping? Okay, search them and get them out of the way. Evolutionary biologists use the cuckold term to describe the phenomena of a woman's twin mating strategy, where she uses the genetic material of one man and the economic material of, an, of another man. Or as the uh, pickup artists say, alpha fucks and beta bucks, where the female actually used deception to bring about this strategy by committing paternity fraud on her mate, boyfriend or husband. Like I am uh, correctly points out, using that UK study, or that EU study, that uh, in the EU, paternity fraud is somewhere between 10% and 30%. And much of that is due because the, um, the penalties for paternity fraud are so much less. In fact, they're non-existent. Back 150 years ago, the uh, 
a woman that would cuckold her husband like that or commit paternity fraud was basically tossed out on the street. And in some cases, in some countries, she could be uh, put to death because it was a very serious crime, not only against the man, but against his family. Because that woman's womb not only carried his seed in his line, but his whole family's line. So in society, that was a very, very serious offense. Adultery was not to be played with back in the day. Look in our religious text, an adulterous wife got stoned. And in some societies, if the adultery was found out, a husband could actually put the wife out along with the kid. And most likely the kid would either be poor or they would starve to death because they didn't have the protection or the labor of the husband. Nowadays, we've gotten so liberal that in some cases, a woman can not only cuckold her husband and commit paternity fraud against her husband, but she can actually get alimony and child support for a baby that's not even biologically hit. But that's the feminist liberal country or society that we live in today where that woman's womb is still his responsibility. And our government has gotten so feminist that you can't do something as simple as requiring a simple uh, DNA test at birth before a birth certificate is actually issued and a child is assigned to a father. You can see the feminist government actually defending this twin mating strategy of alpha fucks and beta bucks. Hey, wouldn't you like to have a fella? Somebody who'd look after you in case, in case anything happened. You know, somebody you could love and trust, and who loved you. Yes, of course. Of course you would. Mm-hmm. If he were the right one. How would you tell? Just by looking at him. There's a few oddball species that try to make a pair bond. And you can tell just from the percentage, 5%. That's the hard way, okay? If it were easy, the 95% would be doing it. But the human has all those same selfish tendencies to protect resources for itself. And deep down inside, you know you want your partner to do all the snow shoveling and all the cooking. You know this. But uh, like every other animal, we have those desires, those instincts to save our energy for our stuff and to get everyone else to do the rest. But our species has evolved a layer of behavior on top of that, which is, shows up in other really social animals like crows and dolphins and some primates that can rein in that selfish impulse. It takes some work. We've all felt it. I can put my own needs on the back burner temporarily. Um, and that's how we stay in the same house with another human for more than a day. Um, some people for more than a year. I love you.